Are we grateful for God? Who he is sending his son that we will pray in a grateful manner, in a desperate manner. Oh, let's think about it, saints, today. The Bible is full of other examples that we could use today. It is in desperation that God sees how serious we are in our asking. Some prayers grow more desperate over time. These are usually the ones that meet with the success that Hannah had. But desperate prayers wage a great price. <laughs> Remember this. Desperate prayers wage a great price, but the rewards it produces are great. The effective prayer is enduring. This can be a real bulldozer. But enduring is a word for us. Waiting. Longing. Hoping. You mentioned it this morning. Sometimes we pray and, and we pray, 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 pray for something and we don't see the answer or the result. Don't stop praying. Keep on praying. In fact, get a little bit more desperate about what we're asking for. That's what God wants out of us this morning. One of the most difficult things I have personally had to overcome and come to terms with is my Christian experience is that God's time frame is definitely not mine. <laughs> I've heard people tell me over and over, God is never late, and he's always on time. And, I, you know, and I receive that every time, and then in the back of my mind, I'm like, okay, Lord, well, you, you know that, that this needs to be taken care of. So, because the people in the world don't wait. They don't, you know, you got a bill due, you got a date on that bill, the electric company, the gas company, the water, the guard, they ain't going to wait. They want that money and they want it right now because you've used their uh, utilities. And sometimes with other things in our life. Healing. Pray for healing. Sometimes it doesn't always come right then and there. But it doesn't mean we are to forget and stop praying. Sometimes we need to just ask him. And then start thanking him for it. <laughs> Thank him for it. Look ahead as if it's already come to pass. Amen. I've been experiencing that and practicing that. And I'm telling you, it really works. It really works. It really works. Jesus told us a parable specifically designed to encourage people to keep on asking until the results come. It's called the parable of the persistent widow. In Luke 18, 1 through 8. In this passage, he acknowledges that some things are going to take time. And that God expects and encourages us to continue while he takes his time. Think on this for just a second. Sometimes God has a lot of background stuff to take care of in order to get the answer ready to come. Amen? And we need to trust him. Like the Sunday school lesson this morning. A little child trusts. And God wants us to be totally, independently trusting in him. There are many different types of prayer that a Christian can operate in. I'd like to share something with you that uh, I found in study this would be spiritual warfare prayer. Satan's battle. Remember we've been talking about being a superhero for the Lord all week. Last night we learned what villains were. Some of our villains and there's many, many others out there. But Satan's battle strategy is to keep us from praying and communing with the Father. Because he knows that this is our direct line to worship to praise, to request of the Lord our petitions. Satan desires to keep the believer out of the prayer closet. Just out of my own curiosity today, how many of you, just by raising one finger, have your own little prayer closet? It doesn't have to be like you go literally inside of a closet, but you have a specific place that you go to every day to talk to the Lord. How many? I'm going to raise my hand because I do. I'm going to encourage you. 
if it's at all possible in your home. There's something about when the scripture talks about being in your prayer closet. And really, basically, what's that saying to us is, go and get alone with God. Just you and God. God and I. So that, you know, somebody, there may be people in the house, and they may hear you pray if you're a loud prayer. Uh, I am, because I get excited. I walk the floors. I pace. I, you know, I just, whatever the Lord wants me to do, that's what I do. I see myself in battle, and I tell you, I'm fighting. I'm fighting because I want to go to heaven. My goal today is to make heaven my home and to take people with me. That's what I'm doing up here. I'm being obedient to the Lord, spreading his word, encouraging his people so that we can make it to heaven. And folks, it's not going to be long. Sister Sharon was sitting in the pastor's home last evening, and she was saying, it's pretty soon we're going we're gonna to be out of here. I don't remember exactly your phrase, but basically that's what you were saying. And it's true. Jesus is coming. He's fixing to split the clouds of glory, and it could be any day. And I'm going to tell you, people that aren't praying and desperate for the Lord, we ain't going to make it. Because we're going to have to get ourselves into place just like Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. The scripture even tells us that we're going to be calling him to come and get us. Come and get me. I've been saying this for over a year. Maranatha, Lord Jesus, come quickly. And as I pray that or say that, I'm asking him, cleanse me, purify me. Move everything out of me that shouldn't be there. Put in what's supposed to be there because I want to be ready. And that's just one of my prayers. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Philippians 4 and 6, that was from the NASB version. Another scripture, Ephesians 6 and 18. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with perseverance and petition for all the saints. Here's three reasons why this is so. Number one, in his word, God is speaking to us. In our prayers, we are speaking to God. Satan wants to disrupt these lines of communication between God and ourselves. Number two is in God's word, he has promised the believer provisions for a successful Christian life. By our prayers, those promised provisions are brought into our life to meet our daily needs. Satan wants to keep those provisions from us. He doesn't want us to become successful in the Lord in any capacity of our life. So he tries to keep us out of our prayer closets. Number three, Satan fights against our pursuing the word with knowledge. Our practicing doing the word and praying the promises of the word of God. Because he knows better than any believer how essential the word is in effective praying. The word prayer. Prayer the word of God. And then live in it and utilize it for the glory of God. We are subject to battling spiritually every day in our journey with Christ and communion with him. 2 Corinthians 10 and 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of the strongholds. What is spiritual warfare? Spiritual warfare is the Christian version of the concept taking a stand against supernatural evil forces. The foundation of this ideology is having a belief in spirit, evil spirits which are able to intervene in human affairs. Prayer is not preparation for the battle. It is the battle. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is why I said just a few minutes ago, sometimes we get too busy and we spend maybe 15, 30 minutes in prayer and, and I, I don't want to get into anybody's business or step on anyone's toes this morning. But I find for myself as an individual that a 15 minute prayer, it doesn't make it for me. I've even found here recently in the past five or six years that a 30 minute prayer
there just doesn't get it for me. I've been spending time with the Lord in prayer. And sometimes my prayers are weeping. Sometimes I'm on the floor. There's times I just sit in my favorite rocking chair, which is my prayer closet. There are times I sit quietly and just meditate upon the Lord. God speaks to us. If we will open our ears and our heart, He will speak to us. He will put within us what we need for the hour, for the day. And it is warfare. Preparation for the battle. It is the battle. <laughs> it is the battle. This is why the enemy will first take away the prayer life of any Christian that he wants to finish up. Once that prayer life is finished and over, all things are too. What is praying in warfare? One of the most important aspects of prayer is spiritual warfare in prayer. The Bible tells us that we are in the midst of a spiritual battle. And our adversary is the devil. He is a roaring lion going to and fro, seeking out whom he may devour. God help us to understand. Ephesians 6 and 12, Paul tells us, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Just take a look around. You know, we were talking this morning about uh, people taking offense. Listen, that's, that's what this is talking about. And that's just one example. We're not wrestling against that individual or those individuals. We're wrestling against the spirits that are in them. Amen? Are you still with me? I don't know what time you get out on Sunday morning. But I'm going to leave you with this information because it's vitally important. So bear with me just a little longer. Satan and his forces of darkness are trying to destroy you. They are trying to destroy me. <laughs> are we going to let him? Or are we going to get serious in our prayer life? There are several things that the Bible tells us about spiritual warfare. Ephesians 3, 14 and 21. They pray that we might all have the strength. This is Paul praying that we might all have the strength to be filled with the fullness of Christ's love. You know, to commune with the Lord, you've got to love him. You're not going to want to go talk to nobody you don't love, right? Wrong or right? Well, are we supposed to love everybody? Or Yes. <laughs> God help us. And we can be cordial. You know, sometimes it's hard to let somebody be your best pal or your best friend. But we can be cordial in the love of Christ and have compassion to pray for their heart and soul. So Paul was saying to us that we might be filled with strength, with the fullness of Christ's love. To feel the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Paul's prayer for us was strength, or for the church at that time. But I believe it's still for us today. The fans of the flame of fire and its spiritual revival can be within us every day. And this prayer for strength is important to us to come against the forces of darkness. When, how, what, when, why. These are the steps to spiritual prayer. One, pray always. Two, be watchful. Three, have perseverance. Four, pray in the Spirit. Five, hide God's Word in our heart. Paul tells us to pray with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit in Ephesians 6 and 12. <clears throat> the first step to spiritual warfare and spiritual warfare in prayer is to pray always. You say, how can I pray when I'm at work? Just pray in your mind. I pray in the car a lot. 
when I'm driving. And it's the best place to pray, too, because it helps you not get mad at the driver in front of you that won't move out of the way. It stops people from road rage. And I pray for people around me, too. Because most of them aren't paying attention. They're on their phones or talking or putting makeup on or whatever. So I pray for them. That's, that's warfare. It really is. Paul goes on to say, be watchful. Do you know we're watchtowers? We're watchtowers. We are to watch out for each other. That doesn't just mean our church family. That means those who aren't in our church family. The non-believers as well. Watch out for them. Get those spiritual binoculars out. Look. Observe. Watch. See. Become that watchtower. The watchtowers are built up really high. So you go up there and, and you look. So you can see if danger is out there. And there's villains. There's, there's villains. And we need to watch for each other. Have perseverance. God doesn't... I don't believe that he really likes weak, power, weak, powerless prayers. I just can't believe that. Because Jesus gave us the perfect example. And that wasn't a weak prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane. He desires for us to persevere in prayer. Again, fervently and effectually in James 5.16. Pray in the Spirit. The only way our prayers will ever have power is if we are praying in the Spirit Amen. of God. The Spirit of the Holy Ghost. You know the Holy Ghost can come upon you and He just starts talking through you in an unknown tongue. And there are, there are times that, that that happens to me. Does it happen every day? No. But when it does happen, I know I've been in the presence of the Lord. And I, I do try to persevere till I get there. But sometimes I don't. And why? I don't know. But when He prays through me, Satan doesn't know what, what, what's going on. He, he just can't even get into my arena. Because the Holy Ghost, He is praying through me. That means I'm praying in the Spirit. And Jesus is interceding to God the Father. And they're talking back and forth. I, this is what my mind imagines. I have a, a very vivid imagination. And when I pray like that, I can just see the Lord just bending over into the Father's ear and talking to Him and calling out my name and the names that I'm calling out in prayer and just really having a conversation about what they need to do about this for me. That's the way I just get into it. Sometimes we have to uh, allow God to monopolize our personalities. If you have a vivid imagination, just let God use your imagination during prayer. There are times when I'm praying in spiritual warfare and I'm battling. I see angels of heaven with swords in their hands. And I see them in the second heaven. And I see the angels of darkness with swords in their hand. And they're fighting. What are they fighting for? The angels of heaven are fighting for me. Because my prayers are trying to get through. And the evil ones are not wanting my prayer to get through. They don't want the effectual fervent prayer of the Christian to get through. Because if we can get our prayer through to the Holy Ark altar of God. We're going to see some changes. We're going to see some results. We're not going to stay the same. Our church is not going to be empty. It's going to overflow with the love of Christ in our body. In our homes. Let me tell you, it is true. I, I've read certain books that talk about things like this. But this is what my mind sees. And I believe God shows me these things so that I will get more desperate for Him. So that I will walk in spiritual warfare of prayer. And I will, in the physical, it becomes spiritual. Something happens. There is a transformation that takes place in my body and in my mind. And I I literally began to war in the spirit realm. You know what? These kind of things are not spoken about very much in our churches these days. 
But we better get back to the basics. Amen. When Jesus went to the garden, he went there to be submissive to the Father. He went there with a goal in mind. He knew what he had to do. And he prayed till he prayed, till he went beyond that earthly place where he was in that garden, where he left his disciples as they were sleeping. He went into another realm where his father was. <laughs> Woo, we need to get in the presence of God. We need to get in the presence of God. When we're singing the worship songs, we need to literally step outside of ourselves in our worship services until we have went in to the presence of God, till we step behind the veil. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've heard different messages preached where the priest would go and take the sacrifice into the temple and they were the only ones that were allowed to go in because supposedly they were supposed to be the ones that were holy enough to go. But I'm telling you today, saints of God, hear me if you're born again, if you're washed in the blood of Jesus. If you're cleansed by the blood, you have every right to go before the throne of God. Petition him with whatsoever you ask and according to his will it shall be given. Are we desperate? Are we desperate enough to spend time in warfare, in prayer today? Hide his word in our hearts. Praise the Lord. I'm going to leave you with Romans 8 and 26 for praying in the Spirit as a reference. Also read Jude, the 20th chapter. The Spirit will build us up and guide us in truth and give us the strength to pray as we should. Let the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Ghost come and give you power to pray. Satan's simple strategy concerning our prayer life is this. If he can keep us out of the word of God, then it's also highly likely that he can keep us out of the prayer closet also. Amen. He reasons that the believer who doesn't use the word of God as their basis for praying probably won't get their prayers answered. Isn't he cunning? Oh, we've got to be wise. Let's commune with the Father. The reason why we won't get our prayers answered, it's because if we're not in the Word, we don't know the promises of God. We won't know what His will is for us. And we won't know how to pray for those. God help us. And forgive us, Lord, for not being obedient to you in prayer. We will pray with uncertainty as that little child that trusts and believes that that adult is going to care for them, love them, take care of them until they're old enough to take care of their self. This letter, the Word of God of James tells us if we pray in doubt, we are not to expect to receive anything from the Lord. That's in the first chapter of James 6 and 7. The devil is fully aware of this truth, and I'm concluding with this. I'd like you to stand. I'm going to give an open call today for us to come and kneel before the Lord in prayer. And let's talk to him this morning. Let's spend some time. The devil is fully aware of this truth that we have just spoken about today. Why do we know that? Because he was there in the garden tempting the Lord because every time the Lord would go away to spend time in prayer he would be there to tempt him keeping trying to keep him down keep him from communing with the Father <laughs> I'm so glad he was not successful aren't you this morning hallelujah I'm so glad that Jesus was a successful Savior <laughs> he is my refuge he is my strength he is Jehovah Jireh, the Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom, and all of those. He's my counselor. He's my husband. 
because I don't have a husband in the physical. I did. And he's gone, and I still pray for him every day because I love his heart and I love his soul. God, help us to get desperate before you. If we want change, we've got to get desperate about wanting that change. Is it any wonder then that he purposes to keep us prayerless? His priority is to make sure that our priority is not prayer. It would make him devilishly happy if every believer learned to live their Christian life comfortably with no daily prayer pattern. He's aware that a prayerless life will never be a God-guided life. And without God's guidance, hey, we're lost. We're lost. We may think we could do it on our own, but we can't. We're not going to make much progress if we don't allow God to be in complete and total control. We are going to be going in circles and we're going to experience a lot of detours, dead ends and dry holes as we wander around in the prayerless desert <laughs> of not communing with our Lord and our Savior. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Father, speak throughout this congregation this morning. As we open the altars, step out of your seat, would you, this morning? Step out. Take a step for the Lord. If you are a prayer warrior, ask God to make you a better prayer warrior. Because you know what? We can grow. We can get better. We don't know everything. If you haven't been praying, if you haven't had a prayer life, ask God for forgiveness. Move on. Don't stay there in guilt. Move on. Move out. Satan wants to keep you there if you haven't been practicing this kind of life. Don't allow him to be in control. And when? Step out in the name of Jesus. Would you come? If you're not able to come, you can sit in your seat and pray. But let's talk to the Lord this morning. If you need prayer, come forth. Brother Greg and um, whoever wants to come, we will lay hands on you. We will ask the Lord to give you a desire for prayer in your life.